calculation. If you're messing around because you're waiting for Bitcoin to go to 21,000 versus buying it at 29,000, you're the stupidest asset manager on the block, okay? It's a rounding error in the context of where it could go, especially, and here's the secret sauce, when the gamma squeeze kicks in. It'll go to your $200,000 price target overnight, Max, when one large company or big pension fund announces a hundred billion dollar position in Bitcoin. Gamma squeezes rip your face off, okay? <laughs> you could be in for a face ripping rally when you are caught short and the gamma squeeze comes in. Oh man, we have a good one today. Billionaire Tim Draper has doubled down on his 250k Bitcoin bet and we've got Greg Foss lined up to tell you why that's bearish and Bitcoin is going to 2 million. Now let's jump into Tim Draper's latest interview where he sheds light on his recent 250k Bitcoin prediction. We're getting bullish today, a lot of fun stuff. Let's get to the news. And here we go, Tim Draper, full send. Let's talk first of all about uh, the reason that you've had to move your target on Bitcoin back. Um, $250,000, you now say by 2025. What has been holding Bitcoin back, you think, the most? I wasn't, when I predicted it, Bitcoin was at 4,000, so it's gone to 30,000 in that time. Um, and I wasn't really expecting um, the U.S. bureaucracy to be um, this aggressive. And I thought that maybe they would be recognizing that they've got to compete with the rest of the world. They've got to um, provide a platform from which uh, entrepreneurs can, can flourish. And by having this um, the regulation by enforcement that the SEC has been uh, professing and driving, uh, it's really driving all the great entrepreneurs out. And I think that that, is, that has hurt um, the Bitcoin price, but, but Bitcoin is here to stay. It's a, great, um, it's a great system of, it's a great currency. It's a great way to operate. I can't wait until I can raise a fund all in Bitcoin, invest it all in Bitcoin have my, my portfolio based. companies all pay their employees and suppliers all in Bitcoin and have taxes all paid in Bitcoin and have the waterfall all fall into people's <laughs> Bitcoin wallets. Because then there's no accounting, there's no auditing, there's no bookkeeping, it's all done on the blockchain and it's all honest and it's all straight. And I think that that is gonna be, that's gonna bring society to an anthropological leap forward. It's gonna be an amazing time and I can't wait for it. How and I you... guess I thought that it was gonna happen a little sooner than it did. I also thought retailers would recognize that they can save 2% by uh, accepting Bitcoin. And I thought they'd recognize that sooner, um, but that hasn't happened yet. And I think it's going to happen about the right time, about the same time Not as it's happening. And maybe we'll get my price target then. Tim, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of the OG Bitcoiners have sort of given up on the transactional piece of it, on the currency uh, side of it, looking at it more as a store of wealth, like uh, digital gold. Why are you still this guy um, doesn't get pushing that? Network. Uh, that use case and how would it work? Would you Come use on, the Tim? Lightning Network or some other uh, software patch to make it faster and more efficient? Yeah, I think when people talk about using Bitcoin as a store of value and that, that being the only use, um, what they're missing is that um, the Lightning Network can operate off chain. So all these people who talk about Bitcoin using too much energy or it's too slow or whatever, um, they're missing that um, when you move it off to the Lightning Network um, and maybe with OpenNode or whatever, it can do 5,000 transactions a second and it doesn't require a lot of energy. And, uh, and I think that as um, the software starts being built for the smart contracts on Bitcoin, uh, when ETFs are, are more targeted toward Bitcoin, they're calling, calling them ordinals. 
um, not ETS, sorry. NFTs. <laughs> ETS are what, what A lot the of acronyms. Fidelity and BlackRock guys are going to be doing. Um, but the NFTs, once the NFTs or ordinals um, become a part of Bitcoin, um, and when um, when DAOs start focusing around Bitcoin, I think you're going to start seeing um, the real flourishing of Bitcoin. And uh, mm. and I think FTX sent us a very strong message that we don't want centralized currencies of any kind. And we don't want, I mean, we don't want a central bank. We don't want centralized currencies of any kind because they can be controlled by one person and that one person can take us off a cliff. Man, no joke. And some great takes there by Draper, understanding the implications of centralization. And, you know, we get, he is pretty based. He sees that Bitcoin can be a, a method of exchange with the Lightning Network, making instant final transactions anywhere around the world faster than any Visa, MasterCard, or anything of that nature. But again, Draper has been around the block a few times and he's been right before. So let's take a look at Draper calling for 10K Bitcoin when Bitcoin was just a young Sprite, 400 dirty fiat dollars. One year ago, during our three days in the Valley, supersized Silicon Valley coverage, I asked venture capitalist Tim Draper, who's one of our originals for three days in the Valley, what he predicted would be the three most important investments looking ahead for him. Here's what he said. Bitcoin could be a really interesting currency around the world. I think that's going to be great. I think um, I think uh, drones I want to grab some somehow getting your pizza delivery to your body oh is going to come very quickly. I think, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think uh, wearable computing. I am still waiting for my taco to be dropped on my front doorstep, Tim. <laughs> the heck pizza i'm still waiting for that but look you have had spot on predictions you clearly have the midas touch at least when it comes to being very well ahead of the game it's a fox business exclusive we welcome tim draper of draper fitcher jervitson thank you so much for being here uh, right off the bat Great. i have to ask Thanks you for having me uh, about bitcoin did alibaba and the lead up to this massive ipo steal the thunder from bitcoin which has been growing pretty exponentially yeah, uh, well, no, I don't think so. Alibaba did sort of take all the air out of the room. But uh, but Bitcoin, uh, I, I'm still predicting Bitcoin, $10,000 per Bitcoin in three years. It um, It's it's a hedge against a lot of uh, fiat currencies. It's a it's a, a new way of transferring cash uh, through throughout the world in a much more efficient way. And, uh, and Bitcoin has created a whole infrastructure of many, many companies, some of which uh, came out of Boost, the, the incubator. Mm -hmm. um, and, and those companies are, being, are creating this whole new culture, this whole new way of thinking. Well, can you name, uh, and can it, you and name some of them, of the, Tim? I, I'd sure, love to hear the names. I know sure. that there's a company called Vorum you're interested in. What else? Just rattle them off. Right. Uh, Vorum, CoinCove. CoinCove uh, operates out of Mexico. Bit Bitpagos operates out of Argentina. Uh, there are two in, uh, two in Korea, uh, Corbit and Coinplug. They're all, uh, they're all reinventing the way people move money. Uh, they make it much more efficient. Uh, better ways of storing. Uh, it's a new way of storing capital and it's a new way of moving capital. And uh, faster money creates a better economy, and I believe that whoever, whichever governments recognize this and see Bitcoin as a big opportunity are the ones who are going to really benefit from this. Okay, so let me just reiterate. You're saying Bitcoin will be worth about $10,000 per coin in about three years. Right now, just so our viewers know, it stands at $413 per Bitcoin. Long way to go. I, I want I want to... A long way to go, indeed, and we're well beyond that now. But as we know, it's going up forever, Laura. Now, I know it's pretty bullish, 250K Bitcoin by 2025, but by the end of 2023, it was super bullish, okay? Greg Foss would say, come on, guy, it's 10th grade math. Bitcoin is going to 2 million. And I'm not lying. And the math also seems to check out. Here we go. The total addressable market for Bitcoin is 900 trillion US dollars. That includes 400 trillion of debt. Below that is 300 
100 trillion of real estate. Below that, 100 trillion of global equities. So we're up to 800 trillion. And below that is 100 trillion of other assets, including gold. You got 10 trillion of gold. You got currencies, commodities, everything else is another 100 trillion. In total, 400 plus 300 plus 100 plus 100 is 900 trillion US dollars. Total addressable market. If Bitcoin gets 5% of that, 5% of 900 trillion in today's dollars, 45 trillion divided by 21 million we're over 2 million bucks us per bitcoin in today's dollars i don't know i've never seen a better asymmetric trade in my life than the opportunity to own bitcoin like people do the math this is so simple I gotta the total about addressable right now. now the matter of bitcoin going gamma squeeze super saiyan as foss would say kind of isn't an if at this point it is a when there's more developments in the spot etf race with the european spot etf coming to market soon an imminent having and mass approval of bitcoin on many fronts oh did you notice as well the esg bitcoin fud seemed to disappear after larry fink and the boys got in crazy how that works but according to draper we are on the s curve of adoption on route to infinity divided by 21 million bitcoin destroys all models but it is interesting even though it's on pop show i'll give you a kind of interesting example almost every technology goes through what i call the the is curve i even branded it the draper is curve every industry kind of comes up and and then gets hyped to the max and then that's sort of the dot on the eye it's a cursive eye mm -hmm. and then it comes drops down and they say oh god well this you know, I can't buy anything with my mm -hmm. credit card and I can't do all these things that the Internet has promised. I can't do anything with it. And so for years it sits there languishing. But while it's languishing, all these great engineers are working really hard and they're coming up with a great way for us to experience this Internet thing. And then it starts slowly creeping up like an S and then it explodes for years and then it flattens out as new technologies come along and go through their same is curve so, so i like think almost like a same... false start in the beginning like yeah it, like there's hype because people see what it could be but the work hasn't been done yet so you got to do the work and then it takes off that's exactly right so i think the same things happened with bitcoin you've had the the big hype i by the way the s is much higher than the i i mean you think about you know the top of the i had Amazon valued at maybe $100 million. Mm -hmm. And now it's worth a couple trillion. Two, yeah, yeah, two trillion, something like that, yeah. Yeah, so that's a thousand times higher than the I was the S. Mm -hmm. And so uh, people don't even realize how creative other people are. Mm -hmm. And they don't realize how big something like this can become. Mm -hmm. There you have it from Tim Draper. We're still early, and I was thinking about this. People are giving boomers a bad rep. We got some pretty sweet OGs here that have been around the block. They know a thing or two about a thing or two. Maybe Foss and Draper don't quite match on price prediction, etc., but they both know the big picture here. They understand that Bitcoin will become the global reserve asset, and I'll let them tell you why. Uh, do you have a strategy where that's concerned with Bitcoin? No, um, I'm actually just buying more. Um, the the thinking is, is that um, I'm, over time we're going to be able to spend it, and I have no interest in ever selling my Bitcoin for dollars. Why would I take the currency of the future and sell it for the currency of the past? I mean, do I want like conf Confederate dollars? No. So. Um, so I'm looking to continue to build on my currency of the future, but long term, I'm in the venture capital business. I'd like to put this Bitcoin to work. And I think that the regulators are going to recognize that this is a, um, a valuable way for um, people to conduct business and uh, and they get they get their tax dollars. They get wow. their uh, share. OK. And and with with my business, I can actually raise money in Bitcoin, invest it into a bunch of companies in Bitcoin, have them pay their employees and suppliers in Bitcoin. And the whole thing keeps a perfect record of everybody's financials um, all the way through. So I can see how my portfolios are doing. I can identify I love that. Hey. possible risks. I mean, whatever, uh, and then, whatever one might and then believe, I can pay my, a lot of people don't. You can, can pay in Bitcoin too. Investors in Bitcoin yeah. on a smart contract 
that then um, filters through the waterfall on a smart contract. So I don't need to have a transfer agent. I don't need to have the audit. Gotcha. I don't have to have the accountants. I don't have to have the bookkeepers. It's all done right there on the blockchain. This is well, I, you, you clearly believe in it. And the, the fact that you are just adding uh, even as high as Bitcoin has gone <laughs> speaks to that. Tim Draper, thank you. You know, I mean, Draper really makes it simple. Bitcoin is in the process of monetization, currently in the store value stage, but scaling and being adopted widely in many places. It's a cheaper form of instant finalized payment via the Lightning Network. We are entering a new era, but don't forget about our boy Greg Foss calling Bitcoin the future global reserve asset, the money of the future, as Draper put it. Bitcoin. Very simply, the most important financial innovation and technology that I have seen in 35 years of managing risk. Bitcoin is the best upside opportunity I have ever seen. There is I have no a price best. target on Bitcoin of over 2 million US dollars per Bitcoin. I own Bitcoin for the kids. Okay, as simple as that. The only wrong exposure to Bitcoin is having 0% exposure. The biggest challenge here is the fiat Ponzi. Bitcoin solves this. The USA is privileged. It's got a reserve currency status. But Bitcoin is going to become the global reserve asset. Bitcoin is freedom. Thank you. Thank you. Man, guys, I said it before and I'll say it again. If you ain't stacking, you're slacking. We're up 100% off November lows. The halving is drawing nearer. ETF opening the floodgates to institutional investment. 250K, 2 million. Hey, whatever. I came for number go up, but I stayed for the revolution as Jack Dorsey shared in yesterday's clip. Draper is right about hodling your Bitcoin because the money of the future, the future reserve asset, as Foss said, we're going places. Stay solvent, stay sovereign, spread the sound money gospel. I'm your host, Rustin, and we are Simply Bitcoin. Like, subscribe, and share these soundtracks to the peaceful revolution, and together, we'll bring about that bright orange future. Fossey's going to take you out. Let's go. I know we're running out of time, and I know you don't like to give targets per se, but given these calculations and such, what would you say is your outlook for Bitcoin, say, price-wise, with your valuations? I'll ask, you I'll ask it in a rhetorical question. How quickly does the fiat banking system collapse? Does the U.S. actually default on some debt? And the answer is, I don't care, because the price is going higher, and it's such a rounding error. It's going up forever, Laura.